Hey everyone, I'm Melissa New and welcome to What's in Your Bag. I'm here with co-host Chase Reynolds with Lens Rentals. Chase, Hi. how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? Fabulous. Happy uh -huh. to have you here. And to my stage left is <laughs> Glenn Dewis. Glenn, what's happening? Well, here at Photoshop World, so yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm in the USA. I'm always happy to be here. Anyways. Happy to be in the <laughs> USA. God bless America. So we're going to talk about... Um, you know, obviously at LensRentals.com, they've got a whole lot of gear. That's why we brought Chase on here to talk about just kind of some hot gear, but more importantly, what what's in your bag right now and different things that you just can't live without, which is a very touchy yeah. subject for you right now. This, this yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. In the air? Yeah, I just, do you know what? I wish I could just say, I have this, I love it, and I also like this, but yeah. do you know what? I really am up in the air at the moment, and it's only been since... I don't know, maybe the last six to 12 months that I've really kind of felt unsettled with my gear. The only thing I'm Look, you can see him with you. He's, I, he's you just struggling. Pain. You can feel it's my pain. pain. We're here to help. It's okay. <laughs> let it out. Let it out. We're here for you. The, the only th I've never been one for, as strange as it may sound, I've never been one for collecting lots and lots of gear. Mm. Um, and I think that's probably because I was, when I first started, I was given really good advice from Zach Harris saying, I only use what you've got until you know the limitations and then get what you think you can oh. find out what you need. So, and I've been pretty good with that and that's been good obviously financially. What would you say is the equivalent of someone just whipping out their phone and just taking it? it what have you seen that leaves the shelves that's kind of equivalent to no thinking, just pull out that small thing? And uh, Fuji actually has been, um, just in the past couple of years, has been just coming up in a huge way yeah. uh, for people who maybe didn't start out as a professional photographer a lot of there's a lot of professional photographers looking for something different looking to go smaller yeah. and then there's a lot of people who are just using their cell phones and then they want to step up in something that can give them a a pro looking file yeah. or something um and a lot of those people are getting great results shooting the camera completely on automatic which is something that like you know been shooting for a long time you, you i've got to shoot manual you know yeah. it's a, there's sure. a pride issue there you know <laughs> so um the automatic functions of some of these cameras uh, including uh, the x100s which is you know, yay big oh, it's yeah. amazingly sharp and um so yeah so with the fuji though that that wasn't enough detail in the background it was just more the coloring for your composites yeah i, I would mainly say it was it was distant objects where there was a lot of detail and it, the, the, the thing when it or the moment that it was kind of really brought home to me was when i photographed some uh, like a canopy of trees i went to this place in the uk where i had to photograph across the top of these trees for this particular picture i was working on so the trees way in the distance as you zoomed in that's when i started to notice it wow um but everything else about the camera. I mean, it, it hurt me to get rid of the camera. I know. I because I, I absolutely loved it. It just right. felt right. Everything was there. You know, I was like a kid playing on a Game Boy with all the controls. <laughs> it was so easy. I loved the tilt screen, the yeah. way, everything about it. Yeah. But I thought, you know, I can't be having equipment that's there only for that because that's going to be gathering dust. I, I, I don't think that's a financially wise thing mm. to do, which is why I don't want to have a camera for work and a camera for play. You know, I think really, I've kind of made my own mind up by, you know, the tests that I've done, right. is that my mobile phone is for everything else. I need a camera for the work side of things. Okay. But you still not opposed to maybe going smaller or lighter? Because you said you do do a smaller lot of Smaller would be great. Right? Smaller would be great. It really would be. Yeah, I mean, if I could have got away with using that Fuji, I was excited that I was thinking, do you know what? I think I've found something that is going to allow me to do all this. Because traveling, going through you know, the security at the airports when you've got a bag full of, you know, the DSLR and yeah. stuff like that. Oh, it, it can be a real nightmare, as we everyone knows. Yeah. But to be able to have an easy carry-on with this smaller camera was fantastic. I, I really want to encourage you to check out the, you just mentioned earlier, the Sony A7 series. I'm really, really tempted to That sounds around, like yeah. it's going to be right up your alley. Yeah. You, know, you have three models. Yeah. Like the A7, so which is 24 megapixels, which is great all around. Mm -hmm. The A7S, which is 36, gets you back to your D800 huge resolution uh -huh. and they have now the d um d7 um sorry d7 r is 36 d7s now is 12 so low light performance is just incredible mm -hmm. and they all share lenses you know you, so you're not kind of buying have to buy all kinds of stuff for every camera platform you have yeah, yeah. you could get maybe one or two as a backup it's, it's, it's definitely one i want to try out because i've got you know several friends who are here this you know this this week that have moved over to that particular uh, brand and it's, you know. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll maybe Chase know. is solving all your psychological gear problems. He's better than a psychologist, Glenn. I'm saying you're back to, you're saying you're a lot lighter too. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Well, Glenn, where can people find your work? Um, main hub is my website, which is glyndewis.com, which is G-L-Y-N-D-E-W-I-S.com. 
Uh, and on there, there's links to my YouTube channel, which gets uh, a video every single week, every Wednesday, a new video goes out. You still out. do one every week? Every single week. Yeah. Episode 62, I think we're up to wow. now. So, and yeah. it's a lot of it, it, behind the scenes or mostly editing? It's, it's mainly it's uh, photography, Lightroom, and Photoshop um, uh, weekly show podcast. It's on iTunes as well. Um, but the majority of it is the retouching, yeah. Okay. yeah definitely. okay. And definitely, Chase, where can people find, you know, we talked a lot of gear, a lot of ups and downs yeah. with Portland. <laughs> exactly. Where can people, if they don't have the budget, where can people find where to rent? Well, we'd love for you guys to come check out lensrentals.com. Um, for instance, like if you want to try a camera, like the A7S or the A7R, um, you know, that's, I'd say about 40% of our clientele is literally people just want to try something before they buy it. Cool. You know, because it's this, this is not a cheap hobby. You know, a lot of us think yeah, yeah. Gonna, we're going to start small, but then they have the Zach Arias uh, gear acquisition syndrome, gas yeah. as he calls it. You know, <laughs> next thing you know, you're like, I have six camera bodies, no lenses work with any of them, you know, and, and <laughs> everywhere. Um, so, yeah, try them before you buy it. Um, so, yeah, let's awesome. Well, Glenn, thank you so much for oh, your thank time. Thank you. Thank you very much.